Hello again, welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. As the European road season draws to a close, we're weighing up the men's stage race heavyweight and asking who has been the male rider of 2019. We'll look back on Il Lombardia, Paris Tour and the rest of the one day races. Plus, world road race champion Annemiek van Fleurten takes to the mud at the first round of the Super Prestige in the Netherlands. First up, we had the final monument of the year on Saturday, Il Lombardia. It was a bit of a clash of the titans really, with Roglic, Bernal and Valverde going head to head. In the end, as they looked at each other, it was Bauke Molimo Trek Segafredo who took advantage, going on the attack on the penultimate climb of the day and immediately opening up a significant advantage. And one that turned out to be unassailable, the effort of the race favourites behind coming too late. Molimo would take his first ever monument victory and become the first Dutchman to win that race since Henny Kuiper in 1981. Was he the strongest rider in the race? Hard to say really, but that's the great thing about cycling, it's not always the strongest rider that wins and Molimer took his chance perfectly. Behind him it was Valverde who sprinted to second place just ahead of Egan Bernal team Ineos whilst Roglic had to settle for seventh having set off in lone pursuit of Molimer and suffered for that at the end of the race. And so who has been the male rider of this season? This was a question posed by Andy Hood of Velo News, who weighed up the respective seasons of Egan Bernal and Primoz Roglic. The young Colombian has notched up a series of wins in the most prestigious races in cycling. Paris-Nice back in March, the Tour de Suisse in June and the Tour de France of course in July. Now, Given that he broke his collarbone in May, which forced him out of his main season objective, the Giro d'Italia, that's not a bad haul really is it? What I love though is the fact that he continued training hard and competing with the best right to the bitter end of the European season. His win to the Sanctuary of Europa at Grand Piemonte on Thursday was a really dominant performance by both he and Team Ineos who had Sosa in second. That in fact was the first time that Colombians have finished 1-2 in a one day race of HC category or above. And then of course Bernal ran out the whole year with that podium at Il Lombardia. The same though could be said for Roglic though who took a win last week at the Tre Valle Varazzini. He became the third rider to win that and the Giro dell'Emilia in the same season. Zilioli did it in 1963 and Coppi did it twice in 1941 and 1948. Now the Slovenian season has been really quite incredible. He won his first three stage races of the season, the UAE Tour, Tirreno Adriatico and the Tour of Romandie. He then finished third at the Giro d'Italia, which you'll remember was a big disappointment for he and his team at the time, but then bounced back to win his first ever Grand Tour, the Vuelta a España. And then a further two one day races before now presumably taking quite a well deserved break. So who has been the best male rider? Well maybe the UCI ranking can help us decide. Bernal is only fourth there whilst Roglic is leading and by a considerable margin over 1000 points ahead of Julien Alaphilippe. Speaking of which, maybe he's your male rider of the year. Quite easy really to forget just how amazing his season has been since he hasn't won anything since that incredible ride at the Tour de France. But as Neil Rogers pointed out on Twitter, he's had 25 top three placings this season and of those 12 were wins and nine of those wins came in World Tour races. But with Alaphilippe, it's not just the stats really is it, it's the way that he won those races with panache and style. He made so many races incredibly exciting this year and let's not forget he single-handedly changed the way that the Tour de France was raced after he managed to make himself a genuine GC threat. Anyway we'd love to know who your male rider of the year has been. I'm personally going to go for Roglic because I've just been so impressed by his consistency over nine months and how impressive his racecraft is in fact for a rider that got into the sport very late. But you can let us know yours in the poll that's on screen right now. Alaphilippe, Roglic, Bernal or somebody else entirely? Uh, give us your reasons in the comments section down below and next week we'll be discussing the female rider of the season which could be an equally difficult choice. Meanwhile, last Wednesday Mike Rusty Woods of EF Education First bagged the first one day win of his career at Milano Torino. He also became the first ever Canadian to win the race. And how impressive was he there? He pretty much just rode Alejandro Balverde off his wheel on the final part of the Superga climb towards the finish. Impressive stuff and very well deserved you have to say. He always gives it his all and I don't think there's a cycling fan out there that doesn't have a soft spot for Rusty. So Mike Woods, you are our GCN Rider of the Week this time around. 
Uh, Wood's win there was also the fourth non-Italian in a row, something that's never before happened at Milano Torino. Uh, there was no Italian in the top 10 on the race, which is the first time that's ever happened. And there also weren't any Italians in the top 10 of Il Lombardia, only the second time in history that that's taken place. Not really great for the home nation, and I for one really hope they start to pick things up again very soon. Then, yesterday, it was effectively the European season closer, Paris Tour. A race with a very long and illustrious history, but which has taken a change in tack last year by introducing gravel sections. Now, this is something that we asked you about last year, and it seemed that most of you really enjoyed the new format of Paris Tour, but it's safe to say that not everybody did. Patrick Lefebvre was particularly critical about it this time last year, and true to his word, he didn't send his De Koenig Quickstep team to compete this year. Anyway, uh, I thought it was an absolutely fantastic race to watch, and it certainly produced a very worthy winner. Yelly Well Eyes of Lotto Sudal flew the nest with 50 kilometers to go, never to be seen again. Uh, the changing parkour obviously not changing the type of rider capable of winning, because Wallace has won this race twice before, uh, on the more traditional route in 2014, when he beat Thomas Vauclair to the line, and also a few years previous to that, when he won the under 23 edition. And didn't he do it this year in some style? Attacking, as I said, with 50Ks to go, catching last year's winner, Soran Kraut Anderson, who suffered an untimely puncture, and eventually coming to the finish line with 30 seconds to spare over Nicky Terpstra and Oliver Narsen. The race also marked the end of two riders' careers. First up, the Dane Lars Back, who turned pro all the way back in 2002. Uh, he also went out in some style, very aggressive throughout the race, and eventually rolled home in a very credible seventh place. Now, I love this tweet from Velofax, who gave us a few of Back's career stats. Uh, in races, he's climbed almost a million meters, which is almost 100 times up Everest. Uh, he's finished 1,380 races, totaling 220,000 kilometers, which is five and a half times around the world. Uh, he also did over 370 races with teammate Adam Hansen. Those two must know each other pretty well. The other rider to finish his career there was Roy Curvers, who has spent the last 12 seasons with the same team in its various incarnations. Uh, Skill Shimano as it was in 2008, and now of course Team Sunweb. Uh, he will remain with Team Sunweb as a member of the coaching staff starting next year. Now before we get on to cyclocross, a few other races to wrap up. Tom Van Asbrook took his first win in over three years at Bain Chimé Bain, whilst at Paris Bourges, Marc Soreau took the win four days after winning the Tour de Vendée. He is the first rider to win both those races in the same season. And then finally, Elena Cicchini became the new Italian national time trial champion last week. OK, we shall move on to cyclocross now. Uh, thanks firstly to all of you who joined our live coverage over the weekend. We very much hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. On Saturday, we had the next round of the Ethias Cross in Krubecker, with wins for Anne-Marie Verst and Ellie Isabit. Uh, the following day in Gieten, we had the first round of the Super Prestige. There, world road champion Annemiek van Vleuten made a rare appearance on the dirt. I mean, she didn't set the world on fire, but she did achieve her pre-race objective, of having fun. Uh, she spent the entire time riding and running around with the biggest grin I've ever seen on her face. It was absolutely fantastic to see. She clearly absolutely loves her cycling. Clear winner though was Caelan Del Carmen Alvarado of Corandon Circus, who was a long way clear of the rest. In the men's, Isabit made it back-to-back -back wins after a real ding-dong battle with Quentin Hermans, who would end up second, and Tone Arts, who succumbed to a mechanical on the final lap. The Super Prestige will continue this coming Saturday in Bohm. Uh, Marty and Jeremy will be bringing you live coverage again, worldwide except for Belgium and the Netherlands, so make sure you set your reminders for that. Uh, in fact, on the halftime show that day between the men's and the women's races, we're going to have some pretty cool interviews with Tom Pidcock and Abby May Parkinson. Uh, last week, Marty headed to London for the launch of the Trinity Racing Team at the Red Bull Studios. Now, the team has undergone a bit of a rebrand. Uh, Pidcock was presented there with his Red Bull helmet by mountain bike legend Danny McCaskill. Here's a snippet of what you can expect to see on Saturday. In terms of that, how much work has gone through? Because I know you put the team together last year, it was TP Racing. How much work's gone through to put this on the road for this winter? So last year was all a bit last minute, we wanted to build the environment around Tom to kind of help him develop and succeed. This year we could plan a lot more, obviously. Uh, talking to Tom about what his race programme he wanted to be, his goals, and talking to our partners from last year. So we've kind of extended it. It was going to be a, ro a gravel and mountain bike team as well for Tom. It has extended again to be a small road club team, but um, luckily we have a lot more time to plan. With Red Bull, we've been talking to them for a couple of years about Tom, so it all kind of came together nicely. 
We shall move on to some rider transfer news now. And first up, it has finally been confirmed where Mark Cavendish will be riding next year. Bahrain Merida. Uh, there, he's going to be back with his former coach and longtime mentor, Rod Ellingworth, who's now the team principal. And it's going to be very interesting to see if he's able to get back towards his best form. Another rider who quietly announced his retirement from the sport last week was Simon Spielak. A 33-year-old will be best remembered for his exploits in the tours of Romandy and Switzerland. He always enjoyed the cold rainy days in the mountains, you've got to say. Uh, Lawrence Tendau also decided to call it a career. His last race was Il Lombardia on Saturday. One of the most likeable guys, I think you've got to say, in the bunch, and a rider who gives a lot back to the fans. I'm sure this is not the last that we'll hear from him in the cycling world, and we'd love to congratulate him on what's been a very successful cycling career, which began all the way back in 2004. Esteban Chavez has signed a two-year extension at Mitchelton Scott, which is great news, I'm sure you'll all agree. Uh, before we finish though, everyone here at GCN would like to say a big get well soon to the cycling legend that is Raymond Pouladour. He was admitted to hospital last week after suffering some heart problems. Right, that is all for this week's GCN Racing News Show. Uh, next week is a bit quieter on the road, although we do have the Tour Huangxi, but we'll also be wrapping up the action from the Super Prestige and the third round of the UCI Cyclocross World Cup and discussing the Female Rider of the Year, as well as the 2020 Tour de France route, so it's not that quiet after all. Uh, next up though, for something a little bit different, how fast can you tow a caravan? We sent Mark Beaumont to find out and you can check his video out just here.